Well, good morning. Good morning. They've uh, asked me to kick this off. That must mean that there's enough people in this room to start. <laughs> I appreciate uh, you all being here. Uh, I'm George Runner, member of California Board of Equalization, and uh, glad to be one of the co-sponsors uh, for this particular event. I'm going to just take a couple of minutes to kind of reflect some thoughts uh, in regards to uh, this event, what it is that uh, you all seek to watch and see and make happen, and then make some broader remarks in regards to some of the issues that I think are before us in the state that relate to what it is that uh, you all are in the midst of. Well, first of all, from a perspective of an agency, the Board of Equalization, in regards to the tax collection aspect of, of our role, you know, there's no doubt that the underground economy is a very serious problem. And you've all heard, I'm sure, some of the estimates, and, and it's hard to exactly get your arms and hands around what that is because it is so underground. But, you know, the estimates are somewhere between 60, 130, 150 billion dollars a year. That operates off the books. And clearly, as we deal with that kind of, of uh, financial enterprise that operates outside then of the normal regulations and responsibilities that uh, corporate and individual Americans have and Californians have, that's significant in, remark, in, remark, in regards to the issue of tax revenue. One of the issues, uh, you know, and sometimes you know, it's estimated that could be up to eight, nine, ten billion dollars a year. I think it's always important for us to remember, uh, and I'll reflect on some of these thoughts as we as I go along here a little bit, that when a tax goes uncollected, that that puts a greater burden on those who are left behind who are responsible in paying their taxes. Uh, I have great concern about the level of taxation in the state of California. I have great concern about the impact of that in regards to overtaxation in the state of California and what that does to the economy in the state of California. But ultimately, when a tax is owed or a fee is owed and is not paid, it ends up being a tax increase and a responsibility then that those who are operating under the laws of the state of California. It's an unfair tax that those individuals end up having to earn and deal with. It's important then that we understand that, that, that those who choose to do business in the state of California, those who are engaged in the economy in the state of California, play by the rules. Uh, while I was in the legislature, one of the bills that I was a part of and worked with was with the roofing uh, uh, construction uh, enterprises. And particularly in those issues, it was the fact that there was worker compensation, that a great number of those companies weren't paying. And it was pretty obvious, you know, in the sense of that particular industry, because if you, are, if you appear to be a sole proprietor as a roofer, that those, you know, the responsible company said, now how can that happen? How does somebody actually load a roof, deal with the issue, and only have one employee, the owner? It just doesn't work. So clearly there is a process there, and so we began legislation and greater requirements then in regards to the issue of workers' compensation, or, or, or uh, workers' uh, compliance to the laws that, are, that were already on the books in order to get those who were not paying that, that, that particular responsibility in a position to pay that responsibility in order to create fair treatment for those who are in, in the industry and doing it things the right way. A level playing field, as you well know, in that process. The challenge that we have is that there's a wide, there's a wide gap between compliance and non-compliance. And again, the issue is the greater that gap takes place and the greater the tax and regulatory environment is between those who participate and those who don't participate, the greater the advantage is for those who then choose not to obey the law. What I want to kind of share about, and I think in kind of helping us gain perspective, you're going to have a lot of speakers talk about the enforcement aspect coming on. You're going to hear about you know, from the AG's office and from 
BOE enforcement and from FTD enforcement and lots of other folks in regards to the enforcement side. But I'd like to step back a little bit as we start and talk about maybe sometimes the issues that are kind of creating the problem. And in many ways, see if what we've got before us as we deal with the enforcement aspect is more of the symptom that we have as we face these issues. And oftentimes then relating to the system and the symptom and trying to spend lots of money and lots of efforts on the sy symptom as opposed to trying to then come to grips with some of the underlying issues that create the problem for us. We must acknowledge, I think, in this process that there is a significant, and again, the dollars themselves talk about it, a significant participation in that underground economy. I think one of the issues that we need to kind of begin to help ourselves ask, ask ourselves too in this process is why. So that we can be seen, so we can truly try to treat the disease rather than merely that symptom that we see, trying to go after the individuals, the companies, whatever in the process. Not that we don't do that, but if we can solve that problem, or at least seek to solve that problem, we'll be able to be more effective. Victor Davis Hansen, a professor and writer, um, wrote a story, a short story, story article, news article, um, that was published in National Review called Two Californians. Two Californias. He identified one California as the overregulated, overtaxed, and the other, the other is not a, a regulated at all and not taxed at all, basically the underground economy. And it's interesting that as we look at Californians today, we find kind of three and three, I, I look at that as actually kind of three choices that people are making. You've got the folks who are staying here in California, seeking to respond to the regulatory environment, the tax environment that they, that they live in and they exist in and they do business in. You've got another group of Californians then who choose then to leave the state because they look at the challenges and the responsibilities that they have and they look at their books and they say, you know what, I can't do it there. It doesn't make sense. And so they choose to go ahead and do that operation, that business, somewhere else other than the state of California. And then you have the third group that is basically those who stay in California but go underground. Go ahead and weigh the risk, if you will, between being compliant with the law and not being compliant with the law. Risking the opportunity of being uh, non-responsive to the responsibilities they have versus the opportunity, the economic opportunity they kind of pencil out. What's the risk worth? Let me talk about what I think of as, as, as the writer talks about as the first California, and that is the, those who stay and even those who leave. See, I believe that Californians overall are overtaxed and overregulated. Those of us who live here seek to do our responsibility as Californians, pay nearly $5,000 per person in state and local tax, the sixth highest tax burden in the nation. According to the Tax Foundation, Californians work until April 14th. We only what, have uh, two more months left, no, one more month left, before we actually start making money for ourselves. Up to that date. All the dollar money that we've earned, all the paychecks that we received, basically go to cover our tax and regulatory regulatory burdens. You know, that's kind of amazing to think about. So far today, we'd be on March, uh, what was it, 11th or something like that, close? Yeah. So far, every day, every day so far, is money we've earned that isn't about our living, it's about some government's living. And I think that's a challenge for us. Now, one of the issues that I've come to believe, and that is overtaxation, is lethal to liberty. Because as tax, as, as, as more and more of dollars are taken away, either through the regulatory process or through the tax process, there are less dollars left behind for me or you as a citizen to make choices as to how we want to spend our dollars. 
So a lot of times when you see people shifting around, when you see people trying to, to move to a different state because the regulatory or the tax environment is too tough, it's really an issue of trying to maintain and develop and protect personal liberty. You know, I always think about this in a very practical way, and you think about it for a moment too. I know many people who have made their living here in the state of California, and they're about ready to retire. And I gotta tell you, nine times out of 10 of the people I know are not staying in the state of California. They're going somewhere else. The reason they're going somewhere else is because they want to maintain as much personal liberty as possible. And the way they keep maintaining as much personal liberty as possible is trying to keep as many dollars in their pocket as opposed to checks that have to go to somewhere else. You know, according to some studies, California ranks 47th in the nation of overall freedom and 48th in regards to economic freedom. High taxes and regulations are the key reason why California's unemployment rate and business climate are among the worst in the United States. I came here in the mid-50s with my parents in the back seat of a station wagon from upstate New York. And my parents came here because California was the promised land. It was where people could go ahead and find jobs and, and new opportunities in a wonderful climate. And throughout my growing up days of the 50s, the 60s, and the 70s, we saw California as a beacon of job creation, of entrepreneurship, of economic success. Those of us who have been here through that time couldn't imagine the day that California would have the second highest unemployment rate in the nation. You know, and I don't even count Nevada, because Nevada is number one. I don't look at count, count Nevada as a really what I would look at as a full economy. It's a niche economy. So in my view, California, in terms of a full economy, a large state, is the number one highest unemployment state in the nation. You've got to ask yourself why. I mean, the environment, did, did there a climate change? Did all of a sudden those wonderful beaches and high mountains and all those opportunities that people love about California go away?
when you are doing your role in your job and finding those who are ignoring the law, you are helping the taxpayer make sure that their taxes are fair and balanced. The bottom line for me as to what we do to get out of this process is the fact that the challenge that we've got to create is a robust private economy. That's the only way we grow our way out of this. We can't do it through, I mean, we could try to get around the edges. We could probably try to find some dollars, and we will find some, in regards to the issue of enforcement compliance. We will also find some in some other ways. But at the end of the day, the only way we successfully get through this is to be able to help create a successful and robust private job sector. And it's clear to me, I spent four years as a vice chair over in the legislature of the, of, the, of the budget and the assembly. And it was during those times when we were pushing $100, million a, $100 billion a year in general fund revenue. And it was clear to me during those times that California had plenty of revenue. The mistake we made, the mistake that was made back then, was we acted like those dollars were going to be there forever. And we attached long-term expense to some of those short-term dollars. And as a result of that, we created a, a, a formula that creates very difficult uh, everyday operation now than when the economy takes a dip. How do you maintain those ongoing programs when you had that spike in, in revenue? Again, one of the issues that we need to help job creation is to fight the under underground economy. That helps job creation. That helps a contractor out there decide that they're going to stay in California when they know that there's an effort to try to make sure that somebody who's trying to bypass the law is indeed being, be, indeed being held accountable. I'm pleased, and you're going to hear more about it, and many of you participated in the effort to work together with agencies. To make sure that we work together with tax agencies, law enforcement agencies, in order to use all of our tools. I'm a great believer that our resources should be focused on the things that have the greatest payout. You know, I'm not too excited about chasing down some little restaurant owner whether or not they're booking the right amount of money that they've got coming in every day in their restaurant. Eventually we'll probably figure that out or they'll figure that out. But I question how much resource we put there versus how much resource we put on, again, the tens of billions of dollars that are being done in large, underground, non-taxed at all, illegal underground economies. To me, that's an issue of priorities, and that's where agencies should work together in establishing those. I close with just once again this thought. The goal for us all to in order to get through a successful California is that robust private sector job economy. What we will not be successful for us if we then, and we watched Californians, continue to fight over the scraps of a declining economy. All that will do is widen the gap of compliance and force people to, again, share in that shrinking economy. That's not a formula for success for us, for our children, or our grandchildren. So as you do your job, I thank you. I want to encourage you to continue to do your work to make sure that there's fair compliance in the state of California and our laws. But together, as Californians, let's understand that whether we're in the private sector or the public sector, None of us have opportunity here in the state of California if we don't see a turnaround. If we don't see private job creation, which then makes all the opportunities we have before us, whether it's health care, whether it's education, whether it's other kinds of quality life issues, successful, if we don't have that strong, firm tax base. Thanks again. Thanks for letting us be a part of this. And uh, congratulations on you just participating in this. Thank you. Thank you.